What's up guys? We just got another customer and it's a good 14 or 12 minute drive, which is even better. About seven kilometers or uh, you know, roughly four miles or so. And we're just gonna see how FSD does. So uh, we're gonna stay in standard mode. Um, I'm gonna do the same thing I was doing before with uh, three day rotations. So we're in standard right now. And then I will, uh, oh, because my foot was on the brake. I'll do um, hurry in three days time and then to chill and then standard hurry chill and i'll do that for probably at least three to four rotations to get accurate data on all three modes uh at least you know a good modicum of data on those modes so we can actually see if there's any difference and then i'll probably just end up using whatever feels the best here in florida which i'm suspecting without knowing that hurry mode is probably going to be where it's at driving with floridians uh, so far standard's been amazing I've only had one issue that hopefully by this video you've already seen the little clip of me explaining what happened with the two lane road becoming a one lane straight and two turn lanes. There's a lot of that out here in Florida and it felt like the car was actually going to try to correct itself like it saw something was wrong but then it went the safe route and, and didn't make the lane change. Um, and then I took over and did it myself and I reported it back to Tesla so they got the feedback But it wasn't like some catastrophic failure or anything It's actually something that catches me off guard a lot And I'm sure that some of you can attest to that as well when you have the way all the lanes are kind of spread out This is a bit more intuitive, you know double left single right two straight forwards But then imagine if like suddenly this lane was a turn left and I had to get over, you know, and, and that is not uncommon here but uh, you know, still kind of rainy conditions, wet roads, haven't had a red wheel takeover yet, not sure where that threshold might be. Um, and I, I just really just want to get some more uh, actual video of 1262 performing. And this is a really good kind of timing uh, for the good old YouTube algo, you know, that 15 minutes or less. So we're just going to watch this do its thing. And since it's you know, amidst some of the first videos of it, I'm not going to edit out waiting at stoplights or anything. We're just going to watch this through, including any, you know, speaking blunders that I make. So enjoy it all and let me know uh, any questions or comments you guys have on, on YouTube or X. You know, give me all the feedback. Uh, I am going to be hitting a gauntlet soon. We've got a merge coming up. Let's see what happens. Are we going to get on it or hit the brakes? What's this Jeep doing? This Jeep's being a typical Floridian. All right, we are deselling and letting the Jeep pass. So cool. Yielding to dumbasses. I like it. Uh, that's pretty good. Granted, you know, I, I, I say dumbass because more often than not, people just are when they're driving. But me as a human, knowing that they were likely not going to let us over, I would have just slowed down anyway sooner and got behind them. Um, or decisively, especially with th that wide opening in front of us, I probably more more, uh, I probably would have more likely punched it and just blown them away because... I can be a little petty sometimes and I'm okay with admitting that and it's fun but no that was handled great because we were getting down to the wire and FSD decided okay this guy's not letting me over so I'm gonna hit the brakes and make this a safe merge so note too that we had a turn signal that has not always been the case when it comes to these merging scenarios and definitely not with traffic circles or roundabouts I haven't had the system consistently use turn signals when exiting roundabouts or doing at, at all doing merges. That has just been non-existent. 1262 changed that. I've got a few traffic circles around me, traffic circles, sorry, pronunciation, around me, and I encounter traffic circles a lot in central backcountry Florida and a lot in Sarasota. Um, they're kind of scattered all over. And so far, every single traffic circle the turn signals have been on point, which is awesome. And that's the first merge that I've noticed where the turn signal was there. So these are little competencies that have come into play that to me just go a long way to like an overall refined feeling of the software. Um, and I know this is no version 13, but you know, for hardware three family, I know there's a lot of you out there. I feel you. Yeah, it's important. It's another reason that I'm keeping this car even when I get my new one because Mew and I are going to monitor Hardware 3's progression to whether or not we eventually upgrade hardware or if we deal with a separate branch of an eventual version 13 that can handle it, you know? I will see. You know, the, the engineering team has done amazing things and really impressed me a lot over the years with certain builds like 11.42, uh, the 12.3 series up till 12.36, you know? 
this may be an early indicator of another glorious 90 percentile uh, software build. We'll see. I really would love to see that because 12542 I think is in the 50s. Not great. I would love to see this return us to a higher level. Hopefully you guys, hopefully you guys enjoyed that first customer video. Uh, not necessarily Tesla talking of the whole time, but a good conversation and a fantastic first run. Uh, balancing city and highway, more back roads plus urban area customer trip, you know, just straight up. And not once did I feel like I had to, uh, oh, okay, actually in the neighborhood, there were one or two stop signs where it was just taking just a little too long and I was like fighting the urge to tap the throttle. So there is that, there is that. But the actual drive, like once we get onto the roads proper, I didn't feel like I had to do anything. All the way up to like when we dropped them off and it pulled into the dealership. So that was really cool. You can probably tell I'm, I'm pretty transparent with my excitement or my feelings about things. And I will talk a little faster and be excited and stumble over my words. And you know, I do apologize for that, but you're getting authenticity, you know, you can at least kind of vibe off of my, my, my moods, my feelings. Cause when I'm not happy with it, I'm sure you saw in a lot of the 12, 12542 and 441 videos that, uh, oh, I wasn't super enthused with a lot of what was going on. I mean, it was still an impressive tech to some of my customers, but for those of us who have been on FSD for many years now, yeah, it was a bit of a struggle bus. This, however, so far, has been a nice breath of fresh air. And again, it's early days. I'm in the FSD update honeymoon phase. Very much aware of that. And I wanna make that very clear to everybody. Data is, at the end of the day, the king of what's actually going on. And that is gonna be very relevant on the dashboard. So, for anyone who doesn't know, um, my true passion in all this is the science side of it. The field science, the field testing, the data breakdown between my data bro Elias and I from the community tracker to my personal Cyberlift dashboard. Uh, both of which you can find a link to in the description of the YouTube channel and on X. Uh, the link to it on X is actually in my bio. Um, I believe it's the link to my personal dashboard, which I'll probably leave that there because Elias has got the community dashboard and, and the data insights and everything. And I repost or yeah, repost those every chance I get. So all the data is there. My dashboard is damn near updated in real time. I think there might be a couple of hour refresh rate on the customer success stuff, but as far as my use of 12.62 and for the customer side, where I'm driving and the heat map and everything, uh, we got to run a little update on it because it's been a little while. We got a few more regions to add in that I've been to because I am going everywhere, guys. Um, we might have an interesting construction section coming up here, like one of those like follow people around with a guy holding the stop sign. I guess we'll see. I can't really tell yet. Oh, let me get my defogger going because that is the trick for keeping this darn GoPro from overheating. Um, I'm waiting to do any excess purchase or extra purchases until after I've got Mewtwo, the new performance model three. So I'm going to deal with this GoPro until then, and then probably get another Osmo, but not to completely derail the conversation too badly here. Um, yeah, I've totally lost track. Oh no, the data, the dashboard, you can click into it and you can click on everything. You can click on all the different software breakdowns on the right side of the page. I'll put up probably an overlay here on the screen, uh, or actually it'll be over there on that side of the screen as you're looking at me to show you what you can click on and look at. And it is completely open and access to all of you guys. You don't have direct access to the raw data because for, you know, a mixture of security reasons and privacy, um, as well as making sure contamination is avoided but you can fully interact and look at everything on the dashboard on mine and on the community tracker. And then please ask us questions. If anything doesn't make sense or you just want more insight or suggestions and feedback, because that goes a long way to how we've evolved the data presentation. Uh, Elias is the mastermind behind the actual data visuals. And I'm basically the communicator. Um, I do the best I can to make it make as much sense as possible and fun and share the passion of the data behind FSD and how it's performing. And, you know, it's been really great to measure from all the way back to version 10.8, even before that, you know, kind of a bulk of 10.2 back in the very beginning when we got this, oh, it's actually a traffic light instead of the uh, person holding the stop sign. So in that case, FSD would handle it really well. When the person's just kind of holding the sign out, that can be a bit of a challenge. There is a video on my channel. If you go back a little bit, you'll see FSD tracking off-road and everything, following everybody. But when we were the lead car, I did have to disengage because the person was standing off the road just holding a stop 
and the car was reading it as a stop. Here we go, guys, traffic circle. You'll see what I'm talking about. As we exit the traffic circle, turn signal on. Bingo! That one was actually a little bit later than the others. Uh, it was kind of turning the signal on as you're passing that rightward exit point. Uh, but yeah, I've, I've loved that. Turn signal competency. Sorry, my goodness, my words are just blending together. Turn signal competency is definitely apparent in this build and it's so obvious because of how lacking and non-existent it was in the previous build. So, and, and again, as you've seen from me a lot with the rain and all, I don't just show you FSD performing in hunky-dory, sunny weather where people try to claim like you gotta be in sunny San Diego or LA or San Francisco or whatever for this to work right. No, you get real world stuff from me. And a lot of you already know this, but for anybody who's viewing me for the first time, this is the channel or the X account where you are gonna get the transparent, real world Robotax experience. How is FSD performing? Is it getting better? Is it getting worse? Can it handle all these crazy scenarios? I'm your guy. And I'm confident in saying that because I've done this for a while. I love it and I will always be transparent and objective and science focused with this. As much as I love Tesla and as much as I could proclaim to be an Elon fanboy and all this, that and the other, when it comes to this sort of thing, my scientific integrity comes first. And if you doubt that, good on you, first off. Never take anybody at face value. Skepticism is a wonderful thing and needs to be applied everywhere, regardless of one's expertise. But you can just look at my track record, look at everything I do, follow me going forward, call me out, challenge me, ask me questions. I love it all. And what are we doing? We are, we're turning in. So we're pulling into this. All right, so we have a gated community here. And this is a very unique case where, you know, I have to get involved just to get in here. And this is something that has to be handled on Tesla's side, not necessarily, uh, or sorry, yeah, yeah, Tesla's side as far as how they're gonna handle rideshare and all. So I'm just taking over to figure out what's going on here. We actually have a crossing guard thing. Let me see what our visitor tab actually says, because this is a single entry point kind of thing. Lovely rainy weather. Okay, thank you so much. Please retrieve your driver's license. Have a good day. Awesome, thank you so much. Yeah, we're good. All right, so interesting security section. Yeah, when you have these little guards here, I don't want to take the chance of um, you getting bonked on the head. So, I mean, that was good. I consider this a success, by the way, guys, because we could easily have it to where uh, the customer just meets the car at the gate, if you're thinking about a robo-taxi and such. So there's no reason to really hinder its success rating because it didn't get all the way to the customer's house. You know, I think that's where, there's another conversation to be had entirely. But I'm gonna go ahead and pick this customer up. It is a longer ride up, or actually, no, it's not too bad. So we'll probably record this too as a separate video. And uh, yeah, thank you all for tuning in, guys. And I will catch you in the next one. Take care.